All right, howdy everyone, and welcome to the Word 103. Today we're going to be continuing in Isaiah, starting in chapter 50, going through 51, 52, 53, and 54. And before we get rolling, let's go ahead and pray in for this session. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this gathering of brothers and sisters that you've given us here and we ask for your spirit of knowledge to be poured out upon everybody here now or in the future and your blessings to be poured out on all of us here and we thank you for that uh, please give your peace and your covering to those who are experiencing worldly stress right now. Remind them to keep their eyes upon you and that you have a way out. And we thank you for that. In Jesus Yeshua's name, amen. All right. So we're going to roll on in to Isaiah chapter 50. Let me get this set up for you. There we go. It's read long time. Isaiah 50. Oh, it's quiet. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand a shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea, I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. Isaiah 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. 
for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be for ever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab, and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea? the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransomed to pass over. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou? that thou shouldst be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass, and forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and hast feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth, that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Awake. Awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hast drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword, by whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord the Lord, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people, behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as the street to them that went over. Isaiah 52. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith the Lord God, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, 
and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore my people shall know my name, Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye. Depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rearward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, he shall be exalted and extolled, and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Isaiah 53, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, 
because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Okay. There's really quite a bit packed into this, isn't there? Let us go back to chapter 50. <clears throat> now, I wasn't quite sure why this jumped out at me, but nonetheless, it did. Um, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. And when we were first reading that, I was thinking, interesting how so often divorced and bad credit go together in this, this day and age. And like he says there, uh, your iniquities 
For your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions as your mother put away. Remember in Proverbs where it says the, the borrower is slave to the lender. So this is very interesting. He is saying, you, you owe me, but you've sold yourself off. And we aren't to it yet, but we will get to that bill of divorcement from Yah to Israel. That the only other thing I have from 50 is verse 7. And I put down, keep your eyes on Yah, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, Shall I not be confounded? Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. All right, we're getting built up here for this case of uh, being washed clean in Messiah. Chapter 51 found the verse six interesting. Um, if you got more comments, put them down below. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax old like a garment and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever and my righteousness shall not be abolished. salvation forever. His salvation is freely given to us. Seven, hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. So this is interesting because I have, uh, we have a brother that uh, is working with somebody that is in greasy grace. And they, they say, oh, the law doesn't apply to us. And then one of those common responses from people under greasy grace is, well, the law is written in my heart. And basically what they do is they justify their actions by saying, if it was against God's law, I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's not the case at all. In fact, that's one of the things that got me out of greasy grace was, well, hey, the law is written in my heart. It should match up with what's written in the law. Boy, was that a cold brick slap in the face, let me tell you. There's another t-shirt for whoever's doing the t-shirts. Cold brick slap in the face. <laughs> okay. Uh, verse 13, have you forgotten Yah? And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and hath feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy? Where is the fury of the oppressor? Are you listening to the fear porn? Did you forget your heavenly father? He's in charge. <clears throat> you know, the same people that mock us for believing in things that we haven't seen are telling us to be scared of things that we haven't seen but they have a solution that we haven't seen. Where are you putting your faith? And then 22. But I will put into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. 
and thou hast laid thy body to the ground and I should, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong verse, I'm reading 23. Thus saith the Lord, thy Lord, thy Lord, the Lord, right? Thus saith Elohim, Yah, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand, out of thine hand, the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. Right? When we come to this salvation, when you put your trust in him. There's coming a point where that chastisement stops. And he says, well done, my son. Good job, my daughter. But the other people get to keep on drinking. Okay, chapter 52, what's going on there? Chapter 52. Verse one, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, and henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Being clean is pretty important, but the uncircumcised, Remember how often we've been reading about how he wants us to have a circumcised heart, meaning he wants our obedience to him. Well, how in the world can we be obedient if he, there's no commandments or judgments to follow? Anyways, what is this? I want to look this up. Where is that? This is quoted in New Testament. Somewhere. Right? How beautiful are the feet? How beautiful, I think. So we'll just try beautiful feet. Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Well, why in the world is Paul quoting Isaiah? Doesn't he know that's Old Testament? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you get the idea. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. And verse 10, everybody's going to see, everybody. The Lord hath made bare his holy arms in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And then verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go out, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Aren't you a vessel of Yah? of our Heavenly Father. Be ye clean. Okay. Uh, again, if you have other things you got from this, put it down below, please, in the comments. That brings us to the forbidden chapter. Now, uh, I think they've changed their name, but one for Israel, which are our brothers and sisters in Messiah, 
and the UN nation Israel over there. This is one thing they hear over and over and over again when they show people Isaiah 53. That's talking about Jesus Christ. Right? 53, who hath believed our report? Verse 1. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Verse 5 is all about Messiah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, our lawlessness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Then I got verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Think about that. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Was he stricken? You know, that has me thinking about a lot of the Torah right there. A lot of the written law. <clears throat> Who shall bear his generation? Yeah, read chapter 53 again. As soon as we're done here. Okay, chapter 54. I don't have anything until verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed, who is Yah's seed? Only one begotten, right? Shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Now remember where we started this off. Divorcement and creditors. Verse 5. For thy maker, capital M, maker. Thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Yahweh is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Who is your husband? Notice, as we get down further, interesting, computer glitch. <clears throat> you know, it really goes with, with 14. Righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, thou, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come with me. Come near thee, sorry. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. When that conspiracy comes, when they gather together against you, that is not our Heavenly Father. I should add, unless you're, unless you're one of them thick-skulled people that needs talking to by two or three brothers or sisters. That's probably me, too. All right, so that is it for the Word 103. I certainly do appreciate all of you being here. You make my life worth living. I love you all. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you soon.